Hello, my name's Dan, and I'm going to build an R2-D2. Now, I wasn't going to do a video blog, a vlog, if you will, but it seems to be the done thing these days, and I guessed um, I may as well do one now, rather than in six months' time decide to do one um, and miss out all the exciting early stages. Don't my hands look big? Uh, anyway, these here are R2-D2s, as you can see. Now, these are my daughter's R2-D2s, and she has promised to help me in my build, although I'm not quite sure how much help she'll be, but hopefully we will end up with a life-size version of one of these bad boys. Okay, so the first thing to do is to make some decisions. Now, I've decided to start with the dome. Um, the reason for that is I just think that once I complete the dome, it will provide inspiration to complete the project. Also, I think once I've built the dome, it'll be easier to build the body to fit around the dome rather than the dome to fit the body. If anything's out by a couple of millimetres, it's going to be easier to adjust the body than it is the dome. Now, my dome will have lights and sound and it will rotate. We know that will come later, but it isn't going to have panels that pop out and things like that. The dome will be made from aluminium because um, I like the look of it. R2-D2 on film looks to have a metal dome and I want to continue that look. So instead of using plastic or buying a similar sized item to craft into an R2 dome, such as a lampshade or a fruit bowl made from metal, I've decided to buy an aluminium dome, which is a one-to-one -one replica of R2's dome. Research really is the key to success with this. Other people have built R2-D2s, um, and I can learn from their builds. The first place to go are the online forums. Astromech.net seems to be the main one. Um, R2-D2 builders across the globe hang out on that website, and they've posted details of where they've got materials from, they've put details on of problems of they've had and how they've overcome them. And as well as that, I've registered on astromech.info, which is a UK builders forum so I can see what local uh, issues people have had and don't forget YouTube you tend to find that a lot of people who have built R2-D2s have done video diaries online where people can see what they've done and how they've done it you can see finished products but also you can actually see R2-D2 online and just looking at R2 seeing what he looks like and getting used to him is is a pretty important step to be honest because you need to be able to know what the end result will be. Okay, I have now committed myself uh, because I've just made a purchase. I've gone to this website here. Can you see that there? And I am now, well, I was going to say the proud owner of a R2 dome, but it'll probably take a couple of weeks to arrive. So. Fingers crossed, it'll be here soon and I can get started. Well, it's the 1st of February 2016 and according to the USPS tracker, um, my dome has arrived at London Heathrow, which is pretty impressive really considering I only ordered it a couple of days ago. Fingers crossed, it'll be here soon. Right. My dome cleared customs on the 7th of February, however, it won't be with me until I pay import duty, which because of my naivety, I completely neglected, and I currently owe... That's right, £109.43p, the dirty robin mother... But I shall pay this, and hopefully, it will be with me shortly. Okay, so after paying 109 pounds and 43 pence, the box has arrived. This is the great unveiling. Oh, before I do that, do you want to just come over here a sec? My wife is filming this. I would like to point out here where it says fragile, handle with care, and the massive <laughs> on the side, but never mind. So look. Oh, yeah. Ooh, get a load of that. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to hide this invoice because the wife doesn't know how much this costs. 
Here we go. The base. It looks like a washing machine. It does look like, it do look like washing machine parts. Another bit of base. It's all about the base. Bits of foam. Oh, I tell you what. Ooh. You are impressed. <laughs> I am. I'm not talking to the camera, I'm talking to the <laughs> behind the camera. That is impressive, look. Look at that. You can see how it's going to take shape. And the inner dome, which is a lot heavier and a lot thicker. I'm quite sharp. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to run through the contents of the box. First of all, we have the invoice, complete with price, which I'm hiding from my wife. Okay, now we've got this here, which is um, the base, which is quite thick. Very substantial, very strong. Another part of the base, I'm not going to lie and say I know how all this goes together because I don't have a clue at the moment. And here we have the inner dome, which is very strong, very thick, quite heavy, and very sharp around the edges. I think I might have cut my finger. And here we have the outer dome. Now check out the detail on this beast. That is incredible. There we go. Okay. And there's my wife giving me a wave. Right, hello again. So, the dome has been unboxed and the next job is to sand it. So I am here in what I shall rather euphemistically refer to as the workshop. I've purchased this sanding block from B&Q. I've decided to use a sanding block rather than uh, sandpaper because I personally find it easier. So, here is the outer dome and as you can see, well I hope you can see because the light isn't great in here, there are watermarks on there, which won't come off. Um, there is also some sharp metal on there, which is probably a bit dangerous. And the whole thing needs a good sand before I can start cutting out any panels and painting. This is also a good chance just to show you the dome. So here's a bit of a 360, but of course I'm not a complete retard, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all my sanding experiments on the inner dome because you can't see that. And once I'm happy with my um, methods, I will then apply those to the outer dome. Okay, so here's the inner dome, which, as I've mentioned before, is somewhat thicker and heavier than the outer dome. Now, the plan is to give it a quick going over with the medium grain sander, and then go over that with the fine grain and see what the difference is. Hopefully, it'll look rather smart. Wow! If you're wearing socks at the moment, prepare for them to be blown right off. Look at this! This bit here hasn't been sanded. But if we turn it round, look at that. That's about two minutes of medium sanding and a minute of, of fine sanding. And already it's got a great brushed steel finish, okay? Look at that. It's not too shiny, it's just shiny enough. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to continue now to do the inner dome and the outer dome. And if it all looks like that, I'll be more than happy. It's a little bit patchy right now, but that's only because I've only done it for a few minutes. I'd just like to note that instead of doing swirls and swirls and swirls, I've gone like that so that there's a uniformity to the finish once it's completed. Okay? Hello, Madeleine. Hello. Are you a Star Wars super fan? Yeah. Who's your favourite Star Wars character? Chewie. Who's your second favourite Star Wars character? R2. Yay! <laughs> what do you reckon to our R2-D2? Metal. Well, he is metal, but what, how's he looking? Awesome. He is looking awesome. He looks amazing once he's finished. How long do you reckon it'll, <coughs> how long do you reckon it'll take us? Ten years. <laughs> I hope not. So when it comes to sanding, I'm going to start by wet sanding, which involves dipping my sanding sponge into a bucket of water. Now, instead of producing a lot of dust, 
it'll produce a sludgy awful material which is very abrasive and helps to get the finish I need. I'll start with a medium grit sanding sponge. A coarse one would be too scratchy. It would leave deep scratches and I don't want that. I'll use circular strokes to start with because it's easier and it makes sure that I pick everything up off the surface of the dome. Once I finish sanding, I'll then go over it with wire wool. Now, this will take some time. Now, it's important to remember when sanding to wear a mask and safety glasses because the particulate that comes from the surface, all that dust, isn't very good for your lungs. And wear safety glasses because, well, your eyes get very itchy and full of dust, which isn't very nice. And if you want beautifully soft and not very messy hands, wear gloves. Okay, so currently the dome is very, very shiny, but I want it to have a matte finish. So what I'm doing is I'm going over with this steel wool, and if I rub in one place, it goes kind of white and quite matte. So what I've done is, and you can see this bit here, I've been rubbing over with white wool. This has got a matte finish now. It's not very even, but if I just run over it in the same direction, that'll give it an even finish. And you can see the difference if I move up here. This bit hasn't been done. This bit has been done. So just to summarize, Steel wool, give it a rub until it goes pale in colour, keep going until you've done the entire dome. It's a lot of effort. So I've, uh, I've gone over the dome with some wire wool and some polish and it's looking pretty good now. Ba, 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 ba. Can you see that? It's got a nice satin finish there. Now I've not done the pie panels so you can see the difference between what it looked like before and after I went over it with the wire wool. It's looking Pretty decent. 